Hello everybody, it's Star Raptor here, and I'm super excited because Star Wars Rebels has come to a close. That's right, not just the season, but the series is now over. I've just seen the last couple of episodes, so today I'm going to be reviewing for you guys, of course, with spoilers, the 14th episode and the 15th, that is A Fool's Hope, as well as Family Reunion and Farewell. So let's jump right into episode 14 of Fool's Hope. So this is all about the Ghost Crew getting all their allies they've gotten throughout the years to go and try to take back Lothal without the help of the Rebel Alliance. They're doing this on their own, with their own connections. And it seems like it's a big task, right? You have a handful of these little Rebels going against the might of the Empire, but Ezra has a plan in mind, and that is using Governor Price as a bargaining chip. And, well, they have this grand plan in mind, and there's a big battle that ensues, and it turns out that with the help of the Loth Wolves, they end up getting Arian the Price. So let's get into the things that I liked about this episode, and I just mentioned it, the Loth Wolves. It was so satisfying seeing these Loth Wolves come out and just tearing the Stormtroopers apart, just striking fear into Price. That to me was just so fulfilling, and in the meantime, you have all your great characters fighting along with one another. You have Hondo and Naka, you have the clones, Gregor, you have Wolf, you have Rex, it's just really, really cool. You see Sabine flying around with her jetpack, just kicking the stormtroopers out of the gunships. Just phenomenal seeing all these characters coming together. However, there's one thing that was a little bit questionable is how the episode started, right? So automatically you have Hera who is on that planet that she finds the clones at in season two. Like, how did she manage to get off Lothal? I guess when Thrawn went to go meet the Emperor. Maybe he took all the Star Destroyers with him, so the Ghost, I think, does have some kind of stealth unit it can get into there. So I'll give it a pass. So I didn't want to spend too much time talking about Episode 14 because I want to spend majority of the time talking about the final episode of Star Wars Rebels. That is Episode 15, Family Reunion and Farewell. So this plan that the Rebels have is to get all of the Imperials to follow this protocol which will make them go all into this core ship that is going to launch and they plan on detonating that ship and basically saving all of Lothal from the oppression of the Empire and while they do succeed in doing that they do suffer some trauma and some casualties and it is not an easy fight so let's get right into the positives of this so first off I really liked how this episode felt so cinematic it felt just like the third act in your traditional Star Wars movie. I mean, you have groups of people trying to take out the generator, or trying to activate the generator, and then you have the other people on the bridge kind of, you know, coordinating attacks. Then you have Ezra, who is with the Emperor, trying to kind of succeed in this spiritual journey, while you have Mart Matten and, and Wolf that are in the ghost trying to recruit help of the Purgle. So I really like that, how they are transitioning very well, I thought, from different aspects of the battle to the battle. And speaking of the Emperor, I want to get right into that. Yes, we had the Emperor last week, and he is back again for the final episode of Star Wars Rebels. And I thought that scene, or those scenes, were just really brilliant. I mean, you had Ian McDiarmid coming back, and he's goading... Ezra into the remains of this Lothal temple that he put back on the Star Destroyer of Thrones and is trying to get him to go into this gateway. Now, I want to know what happens if Ezra were to go into that gateway. Like, what would happen? Was it just an illusion? Was he going to force him into some kind of prison or something? But I thought it was great. Yet again, Ezra just, in the last couple episodes, he has grown so far from being this kid that, I think, it's safe to say most people on the internet didn't really like this character bit of a brat and he's just matured so much I mean we see what he did in the last couple episodes with you know making like making sure that you know he wasn't gonna save Kanan like he listening to Ahsoka not saving his best friend and here he is again faced with another difficult decision he has the potential to go meet his parents again at least according to Sidious and he chooses not to do that. He says he has his family. And that's what this whole show is about. Is to care about the family. And to care about the family that he has now. So he snaps out of it. And I just love the dialogue with McDiarmid. And how great he is. You know with the dialogue there. And, and the whole you know appearance of Palpatine. Was just really masterful. I really liked seeing the image of you know Senator Palpatine. Rather than. Darth Sidious or Emperor Palpatine. I mean, if you guys read the canon books, 
It is often said that the emperor, whenever he's speaking in the public in holocron form, they somehow like de-age him to make him not look like a freaking evil person. And I like how they had that nice little touch here and he was kind of going in and out of the shrouded version of him and the more benevolent or senator version of him. I thought that was that was really great. Another thing I really enjoyed was seeing the Emperor's Royal Guards in action. At first I thought they were the Praetorian Guards from Last Jedi because they don't have the robes that the normal Royal Guards use. And I'm thinking that's a budgetary constraint where I remember them talking about Darth Vader and rendering his capes flowing around was a lot of money apparently. So with like three or four of these Royal Guards I'm sure it would have been way over budget. But they still look cool. I love seeing the Force Pikes like them holding Ezra in stasis. That was really awesome. So definitely enjoyed that. Getting into more of Thrawn's kind of ending here. And I thought it was great how they tied it into the Bendu from season three. I remember this, he, something, he said something along the lines of like these gray hands or something will kind of constrain you until you meet your end or something to that regard. And in a way, this kind of happened with the Purgal kind of constricting them with the tentacle things and going off into hyperspace. So that's going to explain why Thrawn hasn't actually appeared um, in the original trilogy because he's off in who knows where with Ezra. So now that we have this book coming out with Vader and Thrawn called Alliances, I'm guessing that's going to be somewhere in between the timeline of Rebels and something else because... Well, Vader would be dead by the time Thrawn gets back, I guess, or something. It's very strange, but I'll talk about it in another video, I guess. Something that I liked about this, or the thing that I liked about this whole episode, is how it accomplished the main mission that the Ghost crew had from the get-go, and that is pretty much to liberate Lothal. And that was their ultimate victory, was to get the Empire to think that this planet wasn't worth it anymore. It wasn't worth all the troops and all the money to have, you know, to kind of take over this land anymore. So them actually succeeding in that was awesome. Uh, the, this ending montage was something that I was really hoping for, and we got it. And you see all the fates of the characters that we all grown to love throughout the series, getting this kind of happy ending in a way. So we see that Hera actually has a son, Jason Sindulo. That is Jason, that is a complete, um, you know, reference to basically a Legends character, Jason Solo. So really cool nod to that kind of Legends material. And it was really nice getting that confirmation that Rex was at the Battle of Endor. So it's probably the guy with the gray beard that people on the internet have been talking about for months now. And it's, it, you know, so that's really neat. And just how Hera had this kid with Kanan. It's so great to see the Kanan's lineage is carried on. And I thought it was also very interesting how I believe in the first time in Star Wars, it's acknowledged that uh, different alien species can actually, um, you know, have offspring. So that, that to me is really cool and opens up the possibilities for more relationships uh, down the road when it comes to Star Wars. Um, another thing I really liked was with the adventures of Zeb and Callus, And it's just such a great bond and relationship that these characters have made over the years. And it was just so great to see how Callus comes back to Lasan and he actually finds out that he didn't actually wipe out the race. Like one of the things he probably or most likely hates about himself is having, com you know, completed genocide on a race or a species. And now he finds out that they actually embrace him. So that to me was really, really touching. And finally, that whole reveal about Sabine. And mind you, this is all stuff after Endor. I like how they're like, oh, after the Emperor is defeated, this is what all the people have done from the Ghost Crew. And we catch up to Sabine. And she's on Lothal. She's basically been watching over Lothal since Ezra has gone away with Thrawn to wherever they have been. And she is met with some, you know, she is met with Ahsoka Tano. And it is just super interesting because the way they leave it off is that there's going to be more adventures of Ahsoka and Sabine going off to try to find Ezra and Ezra's end is very cool because it's you know he's listening to Kanan he listened to his instincts and what he should do to save his friends and that was to pretty much transport all the sorcerers out of there giving the people time to uprise against the remnants of the empire so that was another great noble sacrifice by Ezra. 
I am sure he is not dead. He's a Jedi. Even though the windows were blown out of the Star Destroyer, I'm sure he could use some kind of force bubble or something to keep him and Thrawn alive. I don't know what his plan is with Thrawn. So that'll be very interesting, and I can't wait to learn more about that in a book, in a comic, or hell, even a TV series. I'd love to see more animation post-Return of the Jedi, and this gives us such a great kind of endless limits, right? You can kind of come in contact now with these characters in between Return of the Jedi and with The Force Awakens, so I can't wait to know more about this. I'm super excited. And I'll admit, I got a little bit sentimental and a little, little bit emotional with those last couple of frames there of that wonderful mosaic portrait, whatever you call it, of the whole ghost crew with Kane in there. That was that was something I really didn't know I needed as much as I seen. And and that to me just it sums up the whole series and from start to finish they set out to complete what they did to free the people of Lothal and you know the whole time this incredible journey was backed up by Kevin Connors incredible music hopefully this guy gets to do some kind of live action film one day because he really deserves it and just minor nitpicks here is there were very predictable moments of these last couple episodes and wow the rebels killed a lot of Imperials when you think about it because they evacuated all these Imperials to this one core ship and just did anything without any remorse. Like it was one of those instances like if you are on the Imperial side of their losses at the Death Star's destruction, right? Then they're like, oh, we lost like almost a million personnel. Well, yeah, the Rebels kind of just nonchalantly killed a bunch of Imperials. So that's something to think about. But that being said, great ending to a great series. Dave Filoni knocked it out of the park and this is monumental guys because we have never seen the culmination, the ending of a Star Wars series, right? Because, well, the Clone Wars got the plug pulled out at the last couple seasons there, so we never got to see a story told in the medium of TV from start to finish without any interference and, well, we've got it. We've got this very focused laser focused story about this group of characters that have grown up together as a family and have you know conquered things beyond what you could believe in so just a very great message and I really really enjoyed this show it's so sad that it's over and well it's not gonna be over because we're always gonna have these characters we're gonna get probably more comics more novels stuff to fill in the gaps and yeah, I'm just really, really happy. So, enough of me rambling on. I want to talk to you guys about this Rebels finale. How it ended. Spoilers. Let's go in that comment section below. Did you like the ending? What do you think will happen next for the Ghost Crew and everybody involved in the Ghost Crew? Let's all talk about it in that comment section below. Also, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I have plenty of other content on this channel that pertains to Star Wars. So, if you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button it helps me out and it keeps you guys up to speed on all of my latest content my name's star out there i want to thank you guys for watching and may the force be with you always thanks for checking out the video please hit that thumbs up symbol it helps me know that i'm making content that you guys enjoy and if you enjoyed this video i also include two videos down below you guys should check out and please consider subscribing to this channel. It helps support me and it notifies you guys of when I get new videos up on the channel. You can also contact me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Star Raptor.